Hello fellow renegades, it's James here, and today I thought I'd compile seven tips, tricks or gameplay elements that I wasn't really aware about when I first started playing the game and that turns out they are pretty helpful when you actually start using them and incorporating them into your exile journeys. These are things that took me quite a few hours of gameplay to start actually realizing and finding out and, and finding the value of those. So I thought I'd share those for you, especially if you are a newer player, someone who's only just started to dip their toes into the game. Uh, but even if you're going towards intermediate, one or two of those things took me 20 to 25 hours of gameplay to start realizing uh, because I didn't really spend much time focusing on them. I've also made timestamps in the description, so if any of those tips are things you already know about and it doesn't interest you or help you in any way, you can just skip to the next section or whatever interests you to get the value there. So tip number one, slide jumping. Now, slide jumping is very valuable because it does not consume stamina. When you sprint normally, you will use stamina. And once the stamina is used up, you will be stuck with running normally, which is about half as fast. And you'll have to wait for the stamina meter to replenish. And that can be quite annoying. It can slow you down. This is where slide jumping comes into play, and it can be a valuable addition to your movement. Because, like I said, sliding and jumping does not cost stamina. However, it keeps you moving forward at approximately the same same speed as sprinting. Now this is especially valuable if you are relatively low on stamina and for instance you need to get the hell out of somewhere because you're about to die because you're at a disadvantage in an engagement for instance. So not only will slide jumping make you harder to hit, it will also allow you to use the sprinting speed but use much less stamina to get away. So slide and interrupt that slide with a jump and then you do that over and over again. You can essentially do that as, as long as you want, I don't always do it but it's very very valuable tool to have in your movement toolkit, definitely recommend it. Tip number two is relatively simple but I did not do this for quite a long time and that is unequipping your weapon to be able to sprint at full speed. If you have a weapon equipped, you won't be as fast at sprinting as if you don't have it equipped. Now, I'm not talking about dropping the weapon, but just unequipping it. And this is especially valuable if you've only just loaded into a new game on Exile and you know other renegades are evenly spread out across the island, so you're not in direct danger of an engagement. So, unequipped weapons, just you can sprint to your nearest weapon chests or glyphs and get those bonuses as fast as possible. Throughout the game, you do want to have a little bit of awareness and focus on what your traverser is telling you. If there is an enemy in the, in the area, you will want to take your weapon out because you don't want to be at that crucial one second of disadvantage where you have to pull your weapon out and someone is already shooting at you. This can really end your round prematurely. So you want to have a bit of awareness when using that, but it can help you move across the map quicker. Now, the third tip is also related to movement or specifically to movement speed. Mushrooms. You'll see these blue bunches of bouncy mushrooms giving you that, you know, that beat running past. Now, I initially thought it's just a fun part of the environment, but it turns out if you run over them, you will get a speed boost. Now, this speed boost allows you to sprint at max speed, regardless of how much you're carrying or if you have your weapon equipped, and it will cost no stamina to sprint at that speed. And often you will find a number of these mushrooms in the same area. So you can sprint over one, two, three, even four, and keep that speed buff up for up to 20 seconds. This really helps you get to your goal on the map much quicker without having to unequip your weapons and make you a little more vulnerable. Number four is jellyfish. Now this is probably one of the things that took me amongst the longest for me to realize and actually start using and seeing how valuable they are what looks like these blue bubbles in bodies of water. These blue bubbles are jellyfish and if you're using your surfboard to traverse a body of water, you want to cross those patches of jellyfish because they give you 15 points of shield capacity added to what you currently have. And more often than not, you'll find two or even three bunches of jellyfish relatively close to one another and crossing over each one gives you a total of 30, 45 points of shield capacity in one go just like that. Very valuable and really, really bolsters your survivability. I started to really go out of my way just to grab those jellyfish because that really helps you survive. You can go to a maximum capacity of 150 shield points and jellyfish are the perfect way to do that. Tip number five, similar to jellyfish in that it took me quite a while to figure out what these drums do and that is they are used for replenishing or increasing health. 
What you do is you melee attack a drum and it'll increase your health. Very helpful, of course, if you don't currently have an item to heal you and you're low on health, but even more valuable, and this would be tip number six, but perhaps it's more of a tip number 5.5 .5 if you have a drum glyph. Because the drum glyph is very valuable. This won't just replenish your health, but this can increase your health to the maximum capacity of 200 HP. If you find a drum, the first thing you want to do is speed over there and hit the hell out of it with your close range, your melee attacks, and get that health up to 200 points. If you combine that with running over jellyfish for those juicy shield points, you are sent for a very big advantage in a lot of engagements that will really, really help your survivability. So those two things are always valuable to keep a lookout for. The seventh tip and the final tip for today is question marks on your minimap or hidden stashes. Now question marks can be either one of two things. They can be a rare artifact, more often than not, out in the open that you can just grab. And secondly, they can be hidden stashes. Now when you are in the area of a question mark that is a hidden stash, you'll have a circle on your minimap showing you the area in which this stash is hidden and your traverser will start to send out a signal and a sound and the closer you are the more intense this signal and sound becomes once you reveal that stash you have quite a good chance of getting valuable loot in there it is not uncommon to receive legendary shield mods which increase your shield permanently by 40 points. This is pretty much the best item for shield increase that you can get. Sometimes you get weapons, they can be blue, epic as well, and really help you with your firepower. So keeping a lookout for those question marks while you make your way around the map it is very valuable. And also, especially if you currently try to complete a contract that requires you to loot multiple rare trinkets in one game, because you will have high chances of rare trinkets when you really discover those stashes. So those are my seven tips that will really help you out if you incorporate those into your stay on exile. It'll help your survivability, speed, traversal, firepower. Try and make use of these, they will improve your game. I hope that these tips have been helpful for you and you've learned something. So unlike me, you will not spend anywhere from five to 20 or more hours before you discover all of those things and make use of them. If you do have any more tips and tricks, well feel free to leave those in the comments for other fellow renegades that they might be able to learn from to help them out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.